yours, and we are all ears. Okay, this is good. This is working. Yeah, uh, so the topic that I'm going to present today is about the credibility assessment in the social networks and uh, what methodologies are being used by it and what are the metrics that are being used by the authors that have published papers on this. So uh, as for the introduction, on a daily basis, millions of people join online social network irrespective of the gender, age, social, economic or religious classifications. Along with this, there, are, there is a tremendous amount of information being shared or exchanged via social network platforms like Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, LinkedIn, the nowadays. Uh, this information may include people's opinions about events or products, personal ideas, feelings, interests, uh, religious beliefs, uh, opinions uh, about the current social debates or government policies, and much more. Uh, furthermore, the political parties are using the social network platform for campaigning, collecting funds, and appealing for the appealing to the orders also. So uh, thus, it is evident that the online social media assumes a rightful place in the chain of distribution of news advertisements, uh, uh, facilitating political campaigns, and even in uh, revolutions, uh, like uh, maybe creating a Hello. Hello. Yeah, we're here. We're hearing we you. Can, yeah. Shreya, can you hear us? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, despite the immense potential of social network platform, uh, the technology is also misused to execute a number of undesirable acts like generating spams, uh, sorry, generating spams, rumors, fake messages, attempt fraud, uh, and uh, attempt phishing attacks on the other users. So in this large amount of data, the risk of running into misinformation is not negligible. So for this reason, assessing and mining the credibility of both source of information and the information itself is crucial and needed to evade the misguidance of the information and the source of information. So what is credibility? Credibility is a, it's a quality perceived by individuals who are not always able to differentiate genuine information from the fake one with their cognitive capabilities. Uh, uh, the dictionary meaning of it is the quality of being trusted or believe, believed in and the quality of being convincing or believable. So the main synonyms of the credibility are the trustworthiness and believability. It is sometimes uh, also known as the trust assessment in few of the papers that authors have written. So uh, we have three levels of credibility. The one, the first one is the post level. Uh, the second one is the topic level and the third one is the user level. So uh, at the post level, the, ta the task is to analyze the content attributes of a tweet to assess its credibility source and determine whether it is trustworthy. So it's basically the, uh, the, anal the credible analysis of, uh, of the tweet itself, the text of the tweet. Uh, for, for research on this, uh, one can use the already present data or use the real-time data, uh, only the data accessible in each post. Uh, not considering complete history or user or topic data. So um, uh, in a research, uh, like uh, a research can focus only on the uh, tweets instead of uh, users and the topic that the tweet is representing to. Uh, featured considered in this level of credibility are uh, uh, message features like the text. Multimedia features like the images or the or videos that they have uh, embedded into the tweet or the sentiment features. Uh, at this level, it is difficult to pass judgment on the credibility of an event or a topic since not enough data is considered that is uh, referred in the message. So uh, basically, we don't have any idea or uh, history of the user that is being posted, that is the, the, that is the tweet being posted by, and the topic that the tweet, 
weight is referring to uh, at this level. So uh, we cannot judge completely whether it is a credible source, credible tweet or not. Uh, so the, so the next level is topic level. So the uh, events are usually uh, uh, trending topics that attract many users who in turn start tweeting, commenting, uh, further and retweeting upon up, uh, about them. So, uh, for example, it's like the uh, the thing that we have right now, the Black Lives Matters. It's a kind of uh, it, it comes under the topic level. So, the topic based features uh, focus on aggregating uh, tweet based features. So, uh, in turn, uh, when you consider the uh, depth of this level, it is all it. it has all the features of the post level credibility analysis. Uh, so the, I, I don't think there is much difference between both of them. Uh, some researchers have a measured credibility at this level using topic and opinion classifications. Uh, furthermore, uh, assessing credibility at the topic level is more efficient than at the post level because uh, the former works with enough content to develop uh, the correct judgment. So uh, basically, uh, the extra feature that we have in the topic level is uh, is the tweets being clustered into different topics. So there is only extra feature that we'll be working on uh, at this level. Uh, so uh, the the con of this level is that it may suffer from fake accounts that can post misleading content on the same topic or for the same event. So the next level is the user level. Uh, this level of credibility assessment depends on features extracted from the user accounts and user generated content. So it's basically the, po the post level, the topic level uh, with the addition of the user uh, accounts. Uh, despite their ability to measure user reputation and influence, user-based features are critical in determining credibility for any news events or topic. Uh, to utilize the advantages of post-topic and user-level credibility assessment, many researchers have adapted hybrid credibility measures that combine all the three levels. Uh, hybrid level credibility models maintain complete entity, topic, post, and user and relation network formation awareness to precisely judge information credibility. So most of the papers that I've referred to uh, have used all the three levels, but I don't The user level in most of the papers, uh, in, in few of the papers, and the few of the papers have only considered the post level and topic level. So coming to methodologies, uh, the, there are three types of methodologies to uh, to assess the credibility. Uh, the first one is automated based methodologies, uh, human based methodologies, and hybrid methodologies. Uh, most of the studies on analyzing information credibility on Twitter are automated and semi-automated techniques, including uh, supervised and unsupervised machine learning algorithms, weighted algorithms, and graph-based methods. Uh, Human-based methods include cognitive and perception uh, approaches like cloud sourcing, the voting methods, and manual verification approach, uh, uh, which I'm not going to explain in this uh, presentation, but they are worth looking into. Uh, to utilize the advantages of both the automated and human-based approach, several researchers have analyzed the credibility of social media uh, using hybrid approaches. So basically, they have uh, uh, they have uh, included both the automation-based methods and human-based methods into their research. Like a uh, few of the authors have uh, have performed the credibility assessment using the page rank algorithms or Navi-based algorithms and uh, validated them uh, by using the human-based methods. Uh, one of the studies have used supervised approaches such as an every space approach uh, with the human perception survey method. Um, machine learning based techniques. Machine learning techniques are previously employed to perform credibility analysis tasks are generally classified into two groups supervised techniques and unsupervised techniques. Supervised techniques includes SVM, logistic linear regression models, Bayesian theories, and Bayesian trees. 
uh, and the unsupervised includes the cluster formations, the k means. Uh, I've seen k means more in the papers and the uh, uh, hidden Markov method models. So, uh, one one paper has proposed a new unsupervised algorithm called credit rank uh, to evaluate uh, human uh, to evaluate user behavior in social networks and rank their credibility uh, credit rank was this designed to group the connected members together and estimate the groups based on the number of members so this clustering step measures uh, the similarity of users behavior with respect to social network type uh, here, the researchers use k-means clustering to measure the similarity of users' behavior. They use uh, they use a, a credit rank jacquard coefficient. So here, uh, in this paper, they have uh, worked on the user only the uh, with the user accounts. They have not considered the uh, content of the a tweet or the topic level that the tweet is referring to. The researchers claims that the solution they have proposed had a broad, broad range of applications, including in stopping the propagation of false news, preventing large scale actions, and uh, foiling inaccurate uh, product descriptions. So the next method that I want to discuss is graph-based algorithms. The graph-based algorithms presented in the credibility analysis research are based on automated classifiers or ranking systems. Uh, so the ranking systems are based algorithms like uh, are like uh, page ranking like algorithms or even based graph optimizations. Uh, with uh, these these algorithms are collaborated with the uh, random forest algorithms and um, uh, navis based algorithms. So uh, one of the uh, application of this is the tweet credit. Uh, which is a Google Chrome plugin used to assign a credibility score, which is computed using the prediction model of SVM rank. Uh, the score is in the range of one, which is not credible, and seven, which is fully credible to tweets in the Twitter accounts timeline in real time. Researchers evaluated the ranking algorithm in terms of uh, normalized discount cumulative gain uh, this is a metric that they have used uh, to evaluate the, uh, their algorithm. And apart from that, they have even considered the execution times also. So uh, the performance measurement for the credibility assessment algorithms are dependent on which type of algorithm are you working on. So some of the most common measures used are uh, precision and recall. Uh, similarly, uh, accuracy, retrieval drive, and F, F measured metrics are also used. So, a few of the ranking algorithms use the uh, normalized discounted cumulative gain and execution times. So, in general, researchers have used several evaluation criteria related to used methodologies for various analysis tasks. So, in conclusion, uh, Credibility assessment in a social network can be done in different levels. So as we have seen, there are three levels. So uh, a few of the authors have mixed two levels at a time or they have worked on all the three and they have even worked on the single level. But in my opinion, working on all the three will give a broader picture of the uh, credibility of the uh, tweet are the source of information. So all the studies so far are text analysis tasks because they are basically studying the uh, tweet, tweet, which is a, which is nothing but text. So uh, the classifiers they have used so far in the machine learning based approach are uh, only the the general machine learning things, machine learning algorithms that we have. So none of them have touched the uh, deep neural nets or deep learning models. So uh, so uh, I was thinking that maybe I can explore in the deep learning field for the credibility assessment. So this is the presentation. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so very much, Ria. Um, before I start with my questions, does anybody have any questions they would like to ask Ria? Okay, Shreya, can you go back to where you talk about cred rank? There it is. Do they only use the social network structure for this ranking or 
are there particular attributes of users that they consider as well? Uh, I don't remember the specific attributes that they use, Professor, but uh, they are mainly focused on the user accounts. What does that mean? What does that entail? I mean, uh, so the node to node uh, relation, like uh, what right. we are doing in a second project. So the network topology. Yes. And how well does it do? What, how do they measure the performance of uh, these credibility assessment techniques? Uh, uh, I, I don't have a, a clear number of it, but I can just look it up quick for you. What metrics do they look at? So uh, they, they have defined their own coefficient to measure the similarity of the user. And so, how, how do they know how well this metric is performing in measuring credibility? No, that's, I have no idea. That's, that's a genuine question. I don't know the yes. answer to it. Yes, so yes. That's something that you need to look into. If we propose a new metric, how can we how can we show that this new metric or this new approach is better than other approaches? Okay. Is there so, uh, any sort of ground it. truth available or do we need to do qualitative assessment or are uh, there other approaches? So the cred rank and the tweet cred, these both are from 2013 and 2014. I know they're very old people, but I feel that uh, they are the basic papers that uh, the other papers that have come, uh, that are like they've uh, used for, uh, for their projects. So that is the reason why I focused more about these papers so that I can get a basic idea of what I'm working on and then uh, build my, my own model on it, on top of it. Right, that makes perfect sense. And uh, does cred rank assume that you have complete knowledge of the network topology? Or does it allow for a few links or a few nodes to be missing? No, there are no missing nodes or missing links. They have the complete topology. Okay. That limits the applicability of cred rank to, uh, to the real world, essentially. Now, can we take a quick look at the machine learning approaches? I think it's in the next slide. This is the slide, Professor. No, the next slide. The graph-based approaches? Yes, the graph-based approaches. Oh, okay, okay. I'm not able to move this, move the, okay. Just. So how do they use a classifier for this task? Is it, is it just a scoring, like uh, assigning, uh, assigning labels one to seven to different tweets in a training set and then uh, training a supervised learning model on it? For the tweet grade? Yes. Yes, yes. So they have used the classifier for uh, a assigning the scoring range for the uh, for the page ranking model that they've used. How do they apply page rank or the page rank like algorithm? Uh, they did not give all those details professor in the in the report, I guess. So they have just mentioned about the uh, data collection and then uh, about the SVM rank. How is SVM rank different from regular SVM. What does it what does it include that the regular SVM doesn't? Mm, no, I have not gone through the SVM rank model. Okay. Uh, could it be the fact that it's not just the tweets, but also the social network of the users that's been considered in as uh, in the model, or in the training set? Might be because they are uh, ma mainly focused on the graph based uh, approach and then they are even using the uh, network topology also uh, along with the tweet content. And how do they represent the network topology? What does the vector that goes into the SVM look, look like? No, I don't have those details. Is it available in the paper itself? No. Okay. Can you share a link to these two papers with the general channel? Yes, general Professor, channel I'll link? do that. Okay. And can I take a quick look at the next slide? 
Uh, so this seems to be the answer to my earlier question. Uh, some of the metrics they've used are the same as that of machine learning, but that assumes that we have access to uh, some ground truth. Um, have you checked to see whether TweetCred's data set is available online? No, I did not check for the data set. Okay, so can you check and let us know if you can find it yes, or something us. similar? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, what's NDCG? So uh, it's the normalized discounted cumulative gain that they've used for the ranking algorithms. So um, I have uh, gone through a few of the definitions of it, but I don't think I have a clear idea of what they're doing. So the only thing that I got from those definitions is they are used to measure the ranking quality. Okay. We are really interested in learning more about this. Yes. Because yes. This Even can... uh, I'm looking into the measures that they've used for the page rank models, even though uh, I want to focus this in the deep learning side, but uh, I am happy to explore in the page ranking algorithms also. Sure. And going the page rank route doesn't necessarily mean not doing deep learning. Mm -hmm. So in graph representation learning and graph deep learning, there's quite a lot of literature on uh, page rank analysis and page rank estimation using deep learning. Very well. Thank you very much, Ria. These are some of the things you might want to look into uh, in the coming week. And sure, if you find any updates on these, just keep us posted. Sure, Professor. Will do. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. I'm going to stop the recording now.